Morning Zion Church, morning YouTube. Good to be able to preach in God's house today and just and let the word come out. And just We're going to learn today. It's a beautiful thing. A lot of us go through things in life. We all have struggles, whether it be illness, whether it be heart, heartache, heartbreak, anything, losing a loved one. We all deal with these things. But the difference is with the man or woman is how they handle when they go through them. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 10. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 10 reads, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is the consolation and salvation, whether it is effectual and enduring of the same sufferings which we are suffer. So whether we are comforted, it is to for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that you are partakers of the sufferings. So shall you also be of the consolation. For, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Now listen to this. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead, who delivered us from the great of death, and doth deliver in whom we trust. And we sh he will yet deliver us. Now this is important. And some of you can relate to this. The older I get, the more seasoned, whatever you prefer, the more wise I pray. But as I get, when I do get an illness, whether it's RSV, whether it's COVID, whatever it be, it seems to, to strengthen. It seems to take me down more than it used to in my youth. But there's a significance to that. There's an importance to this. It makes me realize and cling to what's important in life, that life without Christ is no point. I'm here to tell you that right now. A lot of people have no point in life because they have no Jesus Christ. So, but not sure about you, but when I'm laying sick in bed and I don't really want to bother with anyone, I have the curtains closed, so on and so forth, I reach out to the Lord. I asked him to examine me. I asked him, am I being obedient to the calling that you have put upon me? And I use that time as an opportunity. It's so important that this is the same for anyone. You're going through something. It's an opportunity. If you stake your life upon the promise of who Jesus Christ is, you have the faith and knowledge of who he is, then you too should use your opportunities that come in life for him and also to help others. My question is, when you're going through something, whether it was in the past, whether it is now, how do you react? What do you think about? This is important you understand this. This is how we grow. Do you realize what you already have? Or do you look at what you don't have? Do you see your blessings before you? Or you do, why, why me? I don't have any blessings. That's the thing. Many people don't realize how fortunate they are by being blessed in the promise of what Jesus Christ gives. Paul was a role model to all believers. We have to look at, he didn't care about the haves and the have-nots. He took whatever came his way, whatever he was dealing with, and embraced it. He didn't say, why me? I don't know what's going on, so on and so forth but he was blessed beyond measure and never complained, why me? Who comforted us in all our tribulation that we, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Question, do your past tribulations and struggles make you closer to the Lord, a more of a believer, more faith, or less of one? That's a question you have to ask. It's a question I ask myself. Tribulation, what is it? Glad you asked. 
a cause or of great trouble or suffering. Not talking about a headache. I'm not talking about a scratch in your car fender. I'm talking about a life-changing event. Something that you're dealing with, or your loved ones deal with, or a family member's deal with, or someone that you care so much about. It will either strengthen your faith in Christ or weaken it more for the faith you really didn't have to begin with. Well, I'm here to preach, which I'm here for. One, will never not have the opportunity through their difficulties to see what God has in store for them. But also, we, we will never not have perfect, no struggles, no tribulations, no nothing in our life. Because in doing so, we would never have to rely on the strength of Christ, who we are in him, because we would not need to rely upon him as we're called to. Let's look at the scripture. I love this. The father of mercies. That stuck out like me. A father of mercies. What is that? This is a father of grace and mercy and love given only his only begotten son. That all may be brought to the family. No matter how dark your past or your sin was. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Deliverance from ourselves, from our sin. And this is pretty blunt, but I love being blunt. From sonship with Satan to sonship with God Almighty. People might say, what are, what's he talking about? Sonship with Satan. Well, let me put it in perspective. That's what I'm called to do. Let's put it in perspective. If you're not of Christ, you're of the world. Who's running the world? And please don't say the president. Who's running the world? It's called, he is called Satan, okay? So if you're of the world, then he is still in charge. Sorry, I didn't say it. People don't want to hear that, but it's life. Men are called to preach the true gospel. And that we are due, that we are, we are called to see that we are, even through our struggles, through our tribulations, we are blessed beyond all measure. It's time we just don't share the words Many people, oh yeah, you know, there's a track and then they walk away and that's it. But it's time that we put our action, our words into acts of love. It's important. As a pastor, sorry to tell you, I don't have all the answers, nor will I ever claim to be, but I can tell you where to find them. It's right here. Every answer that mankind needs is in this book is in this book. That's why God gave it to mankind. In my past, like many of you, like many people, we've turned everywhere and everything. And before we turn to God's word, then finally it clicked. It's in his word through the Holy Spirit that we can find what we need. The past week, and I'm sharing, I share it with my heart. This past week, while I was feeling lousy, I couldn't focus. I was struggling to focus this morning. They call it brain fog, whatever. But here's the thing. So I would go to the Lord in prayer, but I struggled with everything else. I would talk to him and I would just meditate. And then I, I just couldn't, my spirit was restless. And then finally it hit me. Go to the word. What? Go to the word. And I did. It hit me like such a resounding symbol sounding. It was so clear. And I went to the word and allowed the word through the word to soothe my spirit, to calm my spirit, to heal my spirit. And it was just amazing. And I'm here to tell you, I spent a lot of time in the word. I spent time in the morning in the word, prepare for my messages for my Bible study, so on and so forth. But this was different. I was struggling. And it came. And I felt like an idiot. Because I knew the answer all along. But yet, in my feeling lousy, I didn't allow the word. And there it was. And I praise God that he showed me it. Paul and many disciples went through many things. You know what I went through? Went to increase their faith. And they're understanding who they were in Jesus Christ. But the other thing, they went through many things in order that when someone else went through the similar thing, 
They could say, come here, brother. Just went through that. I can help you. I can comfort you. I can show you the word that I cling to. I can show you the passage that brought me hope in the Psalms, wherever it may have been. Today, every one of us have gone through difficult things. Amen? It's life. Difficult things that either made you totally rely upon the Lord or pushed you back and you blamed him for your situation. Yet those struggles that we probably have thought, and you got to be honest with yourself, no one else is going through what I'm going through. Well, welcome to the pity party. Yes, someone else has gone through what you're going through. And I know at the time it may not seem that way. But yet, we go through many struggles. Let me give you a perfect example. A couple that's struggling in their marriage through the point of divorce or separation. And they're struggling. And this one thinks this way and this one's going that way. And they're fighting so and so forth. And it seems like it's going down the road of separation that leads to divorce. But then somehow, some way, they come to the word and they come to through prayer and they come to just seek it and put Christ in the center. And they overcome it. And you think, okay. But then years down the road, they come across a couple experiencing the exact same thing. And then they can comfort them as they were comforted through the word, through the Holy Spirit, through, through everything else that God has provided. We all have a purpose. We're here for that. It's not to sit and do nothing. It's to share the love of Christ. To use our past struggles. I don't know about you, but I got many. Okay, our past struggles to increase our faith, but also to help those in the similar situation to help them get through it. Man will try to comfort us during times, use methods on their own, on their own doing until they, until we, until I, till anyone hears the true word of God and re rely upon Jesus Christ and no one else. Allowing the father of mercies, I love it, the father of mercies to give them promise of all things in life now and forever in all eternity. John 14, 27, 28 reads, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the word world gives it, give I unto you. Let not, listen to this, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be Read. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. The man that goes through many afflictions, many times fails to see the beauty of God's love, God's grace, God's mercy, what Jesus Christ has done. You know why? Because they can't see past themselves. All they see is, oh, me, you know. And they, they can't allow the suffering they're dealing with. They can't allow the things they're going through. The heartbreak, the heartache, the loss of loved ones. Every one of us lost someone so dear to us. It hurts. I know. But so does he. But too many times they fail to focus on the Lord. God's ways and thoughts are so much more far complex than my brain, your brain, your mind, or anyone can ever think of. Because here's the key. There's not that there's going to be things that happen in your life and you're sitting back like, trust me, as a pastor, the most difficult thing sometimes is being a pastor. I'm here to tell you that. You go through things that, wow, you know, you feel alone, so and so forth. And then, but here's the awesome thing. The day I come to be in the presence of my Lord, it's going to be like, oh, now I get it. Because I wasn't looking upon the way the Lord looks on it. I was looking, or you were looking on the way of we look upon it. Big difference, but it will all come to fruition. Matthew 14, 26 to 31. Love the scripture. 14, 26 to 31 reads, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, now listen to this, 
They were just with him. They just witnessed the feeding of 5,000. One of the most incredible, incredible, yeah, incredible miracles ever. They were troubled saying, it is the spirit. They cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. I love that. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked in the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw that the winds were boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, thou, I love this, O oh, thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Love this scripture. It's so, it's so perfect. This is many times man's walk with the Lord. Everything's good. I'm walking on the water because the lake was frozen. I'm walking on the water. And all of a sudden I looked around and went, oh, life is difficult. And before you know it, or rather than relying on our faith and our trust in who we are in Jesus Christ, we allow fear. Disciples in a boat seem the storms of life. And rather than call out to Christ, rather than trust them to calm them through the storms, they panic and fear comes upon them. This is for all of us. When trials and tribulations hit, when something in life, you don't even know how to turn or get through it. This happens. I know it's happened to some of you. You look at the storms of the struggle and say, how am I going to overcome them? And then finally, finally, through time, through prayer, through the word, you look straight ahead and there he is, your savior your comforter, your guide, Jesus Christ. Because we, too many times, this is, this is speaking from my heart, too many times we take our eyes off the focus of who we are in Jesus Christ. And then when things happen, we struggle. We struggle. Too many Christians look at the storms in life and feel overwhelmed. Guess what? I'm here to tell you. That's exactly, that's exactly what Satan wants in a believer's life. Not to have the faith and trust that we can overcome anything. That's what he wants. But then we get away from me, Satan. I'm relying on the word and I'm relying on the faith in Jesus Christ. And we can conquer our struggles. When Paul went through the toughest of times, I'm here to tell you, there's times he had discouragement. There's times he was like, oh, how am I gonna get through this? But one thing that never came to his thought or mind was totally relying and trusting upon Jesus Christ through all things. It was his complete all. Why is this significant? Because we may have been dealing with things that he, let me put this in perspective, he dealt with more things than we'll ever deal with, okay? You may sit there, you don't understand, I, I don't. But he went through so many things that most pastors, most missionaries would have said, you know what, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. And they would walk, which a lot have. But Paul did it. Paul realized that through this, I am becoming stronger. Through my weakness and who I am, I am strengthened by who I am in Jesus Christ. Amen. First Timothy 4, 8 to 16. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness, listen to this, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of life that now is, and of that which is to come. And this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. At, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust. Listen to this. The word of God tells you exactly what we got to do. Because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. 
these things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth. Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, till I come. Give attendance to reading and exhortation to doctrine. To, here, I love this, and we're going to talk about this. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, that which is the prophecy and the laying of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, and that profit it may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in do so thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. I'm going to put this, you're going to get a little, little kind of a cool back. I'm going to take you back some 40 years. This is cool. When I was in my early 20s, I loved nothing more than working out. I was in the bodybuilding. I did the protein. You would do like two grams of protein per every pound. I, I was crazy in all this stuff. Love working out, worked out five days a week, two hours a day, so on and so forth. That was my passion. That's all I cared about because that was the craze. That was the craze, trying to build self up to see the physical results. And I did, I did. But then you get older. And you get older and you realize what's important in life. Is it looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or is it looking like a man of God or a woman of God? Real easy to answer. Because those things are important. They will accomplish things to keep you healthy. But they won't do nothing for your future or your eternity. Like so many people try to do. Here it is. Godliness in our life, our walk, our witness is far more important than bench pressing 500 pounds or having 3% body fat because they are profitable now and forever. We live in a world, look at, it drives me crazy, I actually laugh. We live in a world that craves a perfect body. We spend billions, women spend billions, men spend billions. Oh, this will reduce your body fat. This will make you look younger. This will take the wrinkles away from your skin. Well, don't you think that's all a part of aging? But anyway, but as we learn to grow in faith, trust in all things in God, to God, but rather than spending hours working on the physical body. Now, let me correct you there. It's still important to do some cardio. It's still important to walk. It's, that's important. That makes you feel good physically, but it's more important to feed yourself spiritually to build yourself up spiritually. That's so important. We take in the word of God. We feed our spirit the word of God. We don't worry about taking two grams of protein per, per pound of, of weight we have. We more want to digest the word of God. Exercise for the body is good. But exercise for the spirit is most beneficial. The thing that we can do the strong in all situations and benefits us now and forever. All right. I missed, I bullet out a paragraph and there was a reason and I actually missed it. Why do many struggle when illness hits, when bad news comes, when their heart breaks? They have not built themselves up in the spirit by feeding on the word of God and spending time in prayer and fellowship with other believers. Just like building yourself up to be strong. And I used to be very strong. I can lift tons of weight, all that stuff. But yet, if I didn't keep up with it, guess what? It went away. Just like if we don't spend time in the word and in prayer, we, our faith, we struggle when things come. It's so simple. Okay. An example to all believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. Why did I just say that? Because those are six examples of how we're called to live as a man or woman of the Lord. Let's do a checkoff list. What kind of examples are you? Maybe, and this, you got to answer this. I answer this. Maybe you're great at church, but not at home. Maybe you're great with other believers but not with your old unsaved friends. Very dangerous, just here to tell you. 
In the world, we are given the opportunity most every day. You are, I am. Showing the world what we believe in, who we believe in. We can say in our mouths. But if our actions don't align with our mouths, or if our, our mouths don't align with our actions, guess what? People are going to be like, get lost. Get away from me with that stuff. It's the world will look at us in so many ways. Here we go. We do acts of kindness. Simple things. Could be just, hey, Susie, you okay today? I haven't seen you for a couple of days. Do you need anything? It could be, hey, I know you haven't been feeling too good. You want me to cut your grass? I know I hate cutting grass, okay? But I would do it to share Christ, amen? All right. All must be done in love, not like many. Many do things in return. The world does things in return. Well, I did it for her, now she owes me one. No, just think how much we would owe Christ. Wow. Okay, here we go. I gave you those six examples real quick. In word, our conversation. In conversation, how we conduct our word. Charity, which is love. Love of them as Christ has loved us. In spirit of Christ, not of the world. Faith, trust in God in bad times as much as good. And purity. Purity. You don't hear that word anymore, do you? Purity. Just turn on TV. You won't find purity. Watch your words and our integrity of our life. Probably my most thing I got out of this message most was neglect not the gift that is in thee. Neglect not that the gift that is in thee. This is most interesting. In most churches, Everywhere, okay? Not just here, everywhere. Everyone has gifts, but not everyone uses their gifts. Big difference, big difference. Not saying they don't have them, but they may fail to use them when they have the perfect opportunity to help someone that's hurting. They have the perfect opportunity to share the gospel and show acts of love to those that don't know who Jesus Christ is. We live in a world that don't know who God is anymore. To help the place of worship, to use special gifts from God bestowed upon him. Not for me, for the furtherance of God's kingdom. All right, I'm going to make it real. I'm here to stake me being a pastor. That if we all would use our gifts as God intends us to use them, this place would be over full. I'm here to tell you that right now. Do you also think about serving the kingdom? We're going to make it real easy. There's no education. Oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I didn't go to college. Nor did the disciples or the apostles, all right? He don't require education background. He don't require a certain IQ. He don't care about your financial experience or your financial background. He is the fairest of all God. He is the only God, the Father, above all, almighty, sovereign, holy, and perfect. The fairest Father in heaven. And we'll use, here it is, we'll use the simplest man to outwit the smartest. And we'll use the wise and the poor to show the rich what they lack. To love the unlovable, to show Christ where many dare to go. I use this all the time. When you go home today, I want you to do something for me. Take your favorite lamp, okay? Whatever one it is, it's in the corner, it's a halogen, it's like, it's like the sun, okay? I have them in my workshop. It's like the sun, you turn up on it, you need sunglasses. But now, do me something. Put a tarp over it. Tell me how good it works. Not going to work so good. That's with, with believers not using their gifts. As it says, a lamp under a bushel basket is useless, is a waste. Back then, it was a waste of oil. Now, it would be a waste of electric. Today, where's your lamp? Is it on the floor? Is it under a blanket? Is it sitting on the table? Nice and high so people can see the light. 
Is it on the corner of Locust and Maple that many know that you are casting a light? That's up for you to know. Maybe it's not that. Here's the thing. There's, there's differences. Maybe your lamp is in the proper place. But maybe your ball needs to be changed with the refreshing and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Nothing is more powerful and more precious than when a man or woman finally gets it and their light bulb goes off for the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God for his goodness and mercy. <sighs> the disciples put themselves out there to show how much they love Christ and wanted others to feel that love. Are others feeling the love from you? But first, do you feel the love? Today, what are your struggles in life? Are you going through a trial right now? I just came off of one. I'm learning, and I'm here to tell you, I'm learning to embrace my struggles. Because in doing so, it takes me for myself and makes me become more of Christ. My challenge to you, when you're dealing with something that you think is just impossible, it is on your own authority and power. But under the authority of Jesus and his power, nothing is impossible. That is, thank you. Best way to deal with a struggle of life is to turn it into something positive. What? Best way to deal with a struggle in life is to turn it into something possible positive. Our struggles are a beautiful time for a growth spurt in our walk with Christ. Let the Holy Spirit be the comforter and strength we need. Another beautiful thing, listen to this, another beautiful thing in our past struggles is this. It gives us a beautiful opportunity to comfort another brother and sister in Christ here at the church, our neighbor that struggled so and so forth. What a what a beautiful opportunity when someone's dealing with a life-altering issue, a disease, or something else. What a beautiful opportunity if they don't know Christ, but you went through a similar thing. And you could say, I went to Dr. So-and-so, did this, did that, did that, did They help, but, but, but. Not until I cried and fell upon my knee and crafted Jesus Christ was I able to be an overcomer, was I able to have peace through the whole thing. Timothy learned to take his trials and make them into an opportunity to serve his Lord, not allowing anything or himself to be absorbed into his struggle. That's what the world does. We allow ourselves to be, the world allows himself to be caught up in the struggle and there's no Christ being seen at all. Some of you have had some difficult struggles and some of you have come through and said, you know what, without Jesus Christ, I would never made it. What a beautiful, beautiful witness and opportunity you have. Amen. Amen. All right. What do we do when we get hit with things that we just don't understand? We pray for God's guidance and strength about the decision we're encountering. We turn to the word. We ask the Lord to say, you know what? I'm not sure where to turn in the word. I've learned this and I love it. I'm going to share it with my Bible study. I'm going to share it with you. If you have a Bible that has the words of Jesus in red, if you're not sure where to turn, read the words of Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, you will be told and shown where to turn. I learned it from Charles Stanley the other day. I loved it. I loved it. Last scripture, James 1, 5 to 8 reads, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and giveth to all men liberally, and unbraideth not, and he shall be given him. But let, here it is. This is the key. And my brother talked about this today, and I loved it. But let him ask in faith. Faith. Not nothing wavering. For we that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven in the wind and tossed. 
For let not man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Here's where I'm going with this. I want you to think back on some of your struggles. I want you to think how you handle them. Do you realize how many missed opportunities on a wonderful lesson in our life because we didn't totally rely upon the Lord? That we may have missed a beautiful opportunity to share the gospel with someone that truly needed a family member, a brother, a sister, a mom, a dad, an aunt, whatever it may have been. Maybe it was our lack of patience. Anyone here of lack of patience? Or faith, seeking an answer or praying through a struggle. This is similar. Where am I going with this? Real similar. I always put parallels. This is similar to the man that's about to fall to a temptation. He's about to fall to a temptation and the Lord has given him that opportunity to turn to the word. The Lord has given an opportunity to fall upon him and say, look, I'm struggling with this. I can only overcome this through your strength. And in that moment, he has an opportunity, but many times he fails and falls to the sin. Friends, this is how we grow. We learn how to avoid our temptations in life. We learn that I'm a, I have victory, victory in Jesus Christ in all things. Verse five says, tells us that if we ask for wisdom, it will be given. Wisdom to come to understanding while we are going through the trial or tribulation in life, why we are. I don't. And, and please, I'm not trying to be prideful, I'm trying to be humble in the sight of God. When I go through things now, I'm like, Lord, please let me be obedient to see the last thing that is before me so I can become more like you and less like me. What a wretch I am. A double-minded man, what is that one? One that has no faith. Why am I telling you this? Because he's confused. He runs here, he runs there. Well, I'm going to go to this one and maybe they'll tell me what I want to hear. Then I'm going to run over here and they'll tell me what I want to hear. And maybe if I put two things together, I'll get what I want. That is a double-minded man. He's useless because he does not rely upon faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes everywhere to find the answer, but where the answer lies, in the word of God, through prayer, and by trusting and having faith in Christ. Amen. Amen. The difference between a man that knows Christ is he strives, and one that don't, is the man strives to walk in the obedience of the word and in the will of God. This does not people and I can't stand pastors that preach well if you gave your life to Jesus hallelujah you'll be blessed beyond everything you will be but not in the way of man we will still face persecution we will still face struggles and if you're a pastor many times you will face and I'm here to tell you isolation and I don't mean because I have COVID because God wants me to get alone and rely upon him. Amen. Too many people don't know what to do. And that's the promise. They don't turn to the most important person in their life. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's close with this. How about you? I pray your struggles and your heartaches and your heartbreaks. I'm not wishing them on you. People say, oh, is he? No, but they're going to come. They already have. Most of us are seasoned. We're a little upper in age. So we've been through things that you don't push away from God. You push towards him. You allow his word. You pray. And it draws you closer than ever before. The difference between a man grown in Christ and one that is not as how, this is important. I bolded this out. This is the Lord put upon me. The difference between a man growing in Christ and one that is not is how he reacts to his trials and tribulations and what becomes of him after the dust settles. 
That is it in the, that is it in the whole message right there. Perhaps you struggle with many things, I do, but I'm learning to lean upon the Lord. I'm learning, never rely on your own understanding because when you do, it is not good. We call him Lord because then he is Lord over us in all things. The Lord, and when we go to him and we struggle and we just surrender, say, you know what? I can't do this on my own strength. I can't do this on my own ability, but I know you by my side, I now can. That's the promise. We no longer worry about life. I don't worry. Again, I tell people this and they look at you like you're crazy. I tell them, I'm not worried about dying. I'm not saying I want to die. Difference. A madman would say, yeah, I want to die today. But you want, you embrace it. If it's my day for me to be home with the Lord, then so be it. Hallelujah. Celebration. Don't fear death. Welcome. Man. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that we, once we understand the truth of who Christ is in our life, once we understand that we surrender and he did die for us. He didn't die for us to say, well, I hate to tell you this, but you know, after this life, it's only going to get worse. There'd be no promise of looking forward to heaven, would there? But he promises us it's going to be something that we can't even imagine. Because the God I love, the God I worship is awesome, holy, and sovereign. And he is the almighty above all. Let's close in prayer. Dear love and Father, we thank you. We thank you that you give us the ability. No, we don't want tribulations, but even Paul said he welcomed them because he was such a man of faith. But as they come upon us, that struggle of illness, that struggle of material needs, that struggle of a losing a loved one, these are things that are life-changing that we would not lose faith but we would increase it. We would just call upon you and be strengthened through all things, knowing who you are and what you are in our lives. And all we have to do is allow you to walk by our side. Says, as we walk through the valley of shadow of death, it doesn't say we're left there forever. It says we walk through it. You walk by our side. You take our hand and give us strength. And I pray if someone's struggling with something today, don't even want to talk about. I pray that today is their day that they come to you and just trust you and just let it all out. There's nothing more important in this world than trusting you with everything. And I pray if, if someone today here or someone watching don't know you, that is a scary place to be, but it's not too late. Let them call upon you. Let them trust upon you. Let them just say, I need you, Lord, through all things. I love you, Lord, and I'm trusting you today with my life. Whatever comes down the road, I am ready to handle it because you are by my side. We love you. We thank you. We give you the glory in all things. In Jesus' most holy name, amen.